what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so this will be my spoiler free review for screen 5 screen 2022 scream whatever you want to call it directed by matt bennell and Leopold open and tyler gillette written by james vanderbilt and guy Busick. stars neff campbell david arquette courtney cox mikey madison mason gooding sonia amar Jen Ortega, Melissa Barrera, Jack Quaid, Dylan Minnette, Marley Shelton, and many other talented actors and actresses to help bring this satisfyingly pleasing return to Woodsboro to life. So it's set 25 years, past, 25 years after the events of the original Woodsboro murders. Another person has decided to don the ghost face mask and they're out to uncover and reveal secrets that were thought to be buried within the town's past. And along the way, you'll learn how it all ties in with our new group of characters that is led by Sam Carpenter, who's portrayed by... Melissa Barrera and her younger sister Tara Carpenter who's betrayed by Jenna Ortega and Tara Carpenter's group of friends who make up a lot of the other supporting cast members that I mentioned as they are like the focus this time around the movie does a great job at focusing on these characters for a good chunk of the movie before it introduces us back to the characters we already know and love Dewey, Gale and Sydney you don't get an impression when they appear that those new characters that you just spent so much time with are irrelevant but everybody comes together and it meshes well in a nice big a nice big treat i'll just say you spend time with this woman sam carpenter who is acting like our new sydney she has a troubled past she ran away at a very young age because of that trauma that she is dealing with and she not ran away but just left town and she has like caused some friction between her and her sister over this and her sister's friends as well some of her sister's friends she has connections to all of them and you'll learn that as the movie progresses so what melissa barrera is able to do is she's able to she's able to give you a performance that allows you to grow attached to sam you feel for sam you want to see sam overcome but there's also this side of sam that is a lot more edgier and dark i would say that you don't really tap into but you i would say they give you glimpses of it with certain actions that she makes along the way so while cindy was more i would say like a girl next door sam isn't completely like that sam definitely has some sides of her that feels like a perfect blend between sydney and gail she has like all of their great qualities mixed into one and you have sam carpenter so i think that's going to be something that makes her really a character for a lot of people to grow attached to and just want to see more of her from now whether or not she'll be our new final girl going into scream six and beyond you'll have to wait to see the movie for that because she could in fact die the way they use the legacy cast is great nev campbell as Sydney Prescott, she's in a motherly role, Sarah Connor type of role, Laurie Strode Halloween 2018 type of role. She's basically in the mentality of, you know what? I'm tired of this. I know what I have to do. I've been through this. You guys need to get in line. Just listen to me. I got you. <laughs> That's literally how it comes across. She's so confident. There's not a single moment in the film where I feel that she is in a victim mentality, in a victim mentality or any type of victim role. There's not a single moment where I would say Sydney is even fearing for her life. And I think that is something that will be like a breath of fresh air to, to a lot of us. It's nice to just see her tap in and see how secure she is and how strong all those other killing sprees have made her. I think this highlights that tremendously how you see her here. She's not very scared or anything like that. She's just overly confident. It oozes from her. This one character in particular, I know is going to be a fan favorite. I've already seen mentions of her. Jasmine Savoy Brown's character of Mindy Meeks Martin, who basically is a big time horror nerd. I would say she's the biggest horror nerd out of the group. Uh, you're going to love her. A lot of people are going to love her. She is very knowledgeable. She has a thing for elevated horror. She's the one who is kind of explaining requels. So you get like all these homages and parallels between her and her own uncle fictional uncle randy meeks because that's his niece uh and it's just the way she kind of acts like a mouthpiece for those people who like to pick together or put together the movie before they watch it like i know i like to do with a lot of movies and see how right you were upon watching it matt and tyler do a tremendous job at building a lot of tension at certain times and just getting hitting you in the heart too with the feels and there's a lot of things that are going to make you sad I'm, I'm just being honest you're going to feel sad you're going to laugh you're going to have a good time you're going to be terrified as well uh 
a lot of great tension building, a lot of pulling the rug out from under you where you think they're going to do one thing, but then it goes another direction. It's like, whoa, just completely catching you off guard. Roger L. Jackson is in his bag as Ghostface this time around. Not as much as he was off the wall in Scream 4 or anything, but it's just the way he's interacting with specifically like Melissa Barrera, who not Melissa Barrera, but Jenna Ortega in the opening sequence in particular, where she's going over her interest and her passion for elevator horror, like Hereditary, The Witch, etc., The Baba Duke. It was just like the way he's talking her and the way they're playing off of each other you just you grow as a horror fan you're gonna fall in love with them you're gonna want that conversation to keep it up but then it turns menacing of course and it's very gut-wrenching your heart is racing you wanting to see how this unfolds there's a lot of brutality from Ghostface this time around very brutal very bold and very brutal I do want to say that at times with the writing the commentary on toxic fandom was done tremendously well it's not over the top they're not calling out any one specific fandom it feels very appropriate for the times that we're in the motive also is very timely speaks to again a lot of things going on in the climate of fandom horror any fandom it's not talking about any one specific thing it feels timely and it feels very relevant it's not ahead of its time or anything like that but the di direction again gives you some tremendous shots the way that they recreated Stu's house in that one shot where Sydney's outside of Stu's house and it's kind of like when the camera's panning and you that one frame is just chills literal chills because you're getting this vibe of feeling Sydney possibly going through and reliving all that trauma in her head before she's about to re-enter this house and the finale is completely bonkers that's going to be a crowd pleaser for sure very insane I would say that if you're someone who has been paying attention and trying to piece together who the killers are, you probably already you probably are going to be piecing it together along the way while you're watching it. And even if you figure it out, you will have fun. It's still a fun ride. How everything is executed is fun. They treat Sam's secret as, again, like the Marine Prescott subplot is not something that's hidden until the very end. It's acting as a Marine Prescott subplot, which adds a lot more intrigue to what's going on with this new Ghostface killer. The pacing, I would say, was a bit fast during the final act. And in between at times, they need, they didn't let a lot of moments breathe the way I wish that they would. Other characters, again, are a little bit more developed than others. You won't care about some deaths more than others. Brian Tyler's score adds a lot of emotional weight to certain moments as well. When you're going to be wanting to cry and just gush and just blow your eyes, blow your eyes and nose out. <laughs> uh, a brilliant score. He mixes in Marco Beltrami's stuff with his own unique style. And I loved it. I love Screen 5. I'm going to have to give it a 7.5 out of 10. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notification and miss a video. In the description, I have links to my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. With all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.